The ROG Strix 5600 XT 0 6G has shown up. Let's see how it stacks up against a card that is 30 to $40 less expensive in the Founders Edition 2060. Should be interesting. Okay, so the, this uh, 5600 XT has just come out and it's blowing things up a little bit. You know, they, they release it, it's supposed to be this $300 or sub $300 graphics card. NVIDIA drops the price on their 2060, which makes their 1660 Ti irrelevant, but the base BIOS on the 5600 XTs are, I guess, apparently jank. So they have you update those V BIOSes so that they're now competitive or they, so they think with the 2060. So this card, which is the um, ROG Strix 5600 XT, um, 06G edition, I believe is what it's called, uh, has had its uh, VBOS uh, flashed, and we're gonna cover that in a video coming up here as to how simple that is to do and the performance gains you see out of it. Uh, but I've done that on this card, and I've done some benchmarks between that and the Founders Edition 2060. Now, you can get the Founders Edition 2060 from NVIDIA directly right now for $299. It's a great buy, it's better than it's been. Uh, and this, when overclocked, is an amazing card, and you're gonna see that here in a little bit. At the time of recording, the ROG Strix 5600 XT is $339.99. So, take that into consideration that you've got uh, over a 10% price variance between the two cards as to which one's gonna be the better value. So, first off, I wanna talk about a few of the features that do exist on the card, and we're gonna look over it here. One, it does have uh, dual BIOS, so that's really nice. Um, especially when you flash them, you've got that backup in case, let's say your VBIOS flash failed, and frankly, I haven't had that problem yet. The dual BIOS is set up in a performance mode, is which, and that's what I've got it set on right now, <clears throat> and then a quiet mode, so brings the fans so that they're basically silent. It, silent. it introduces a second profile. Um, it's obviously got a triple fan design. It's got a very heavy um, overkill uh, heat sink like they like to do on their Strix cards. Nice RGB lighting that can be controlled from within the GPU Tweak uh, 2 program, I believe it's called, which is actually what I'm using to overclock and set the parameters on this card. Um, and it, it comes with a uh, eight pin and a six pin for power. So there's sufficient power to delivery, there's sufficient cooling. I will say the card's quiet. I will say it seems to really, I mean, the card itself looks, the games look fantastic on it. We're gonna get into the uh, benchmarks here real quick, but first I wanna cover what our bench, our test bench is. I've got a an, an, uh, 9900K on here that is set at uh, 4.9 gigahertz on all cores, just to keep something uh, you know, pretty straightforward. Uh, try to keep it somewhat similar in performance to what most people might be using. Um, I do realize that people buying this card are probably not using a 9900K and a Maximus Extreme motherboard and 32 gigs of RAM like what I got set up on this. But what this will allow me to do is make sure I don't have any of that so-called CPU bottleneck. So you're gonna get pure performance from the card, probably a little bit of a push from the processor as well. I would foresee someone buying this a $300 graphics card like this, uh, probably using a 3700X or 3600 from Ryzen, or maybe a 9600, I, that might be still pushing it price point wise, but um, overall, you will get some good performance out of this. Now, uh, for my overall test, but again, it is on 9900K on the Maximus 11 Extreme motherboard. I've got 32 gigabytes of GDDR4 um, G-Skill Trident Z RAM at 3600 speed. Um, I am got everything loaded right now on a, a Samsung 970 EVO Plus uh, M.2 drive, and we'll be uh, running everything off of that. So without further ado, Let's jump into the benchmarks and let those numbers speak for themselves. Part of the reason I'm doing all the testing on this in 1080p is because that's what this, these, or well, this, that's what the 5600 XT is targeted after. It's said to be the ultimate 1080p gaming card. 
Maybe it is, maybe it isn't, I don't know. But the, I do know that the majority of gamers, almost 83% are playing on a 1080p setup. So that's why I've done all of these benchmarks in 1080p. I haven't done any in, in 1440 or 4K because frankly, this is not a 4K gaming card. Uh, well, neither one of them not is. So that's the reason for that. In case you ask, uh, here you go. Okay, the benchmarks pretty much speak for themselves. The updated BIOS makes it somewhat competitive with the 2060. However, this card at the price premium of $339 does not make it competitive with a Founders Edition 2060. I would imagine the other cards that are out there, the Power Cooler, the XFX, I'm assuming um, the Nitro Pulse, uh, version of the 5600 uh, XTs are going to likely be very competitive uh, with regards to frame rates and will give you very similar performances. This one, at least I would think it would from the things I'm seeing out there, it would make those a much better value uh, as a 5600 XT over the Asus Strix 5600 XT. I just cannot say that that is a good value for what you're getting for performance out of that card. Yes, it's got a nice cooler. That's great. Yes, it's quiet. It overclocks easily to an extent. I mean, you can't really push it that far. I mean, you get a little bit of a range with it, but I mean, I've only got it 40 over the base clock of the 1780 that you get with the uh, new BIOS. And I got a, you know, 330 megahertz additional out of the, uh, of the memory. But that's what you're getting. I mean, that this new BIOS is basically giving you its max performance. With that said, if you're gonna go spend that money between these two cars, buy, buy the Founders Edition if you can get it. Now, I'm not gonna say the 5600 XT is a bust uh, overall. If you are looking at one of the ones that are priced sub 300, those are a much more alluring uh, card uh, at that point, at that price. If you're under 300, I'd say go take a look at it, kind of a, Pick your poison at that point. Very similar performance. I think overall, the Infinity does give you a little additional performance, especially when you overclock it, and that's the key. If you're going to leave it stock, your 5600 XT at that point would probably be, would do you great. But if you're going to go ahead and push it just a little bit, and you can really push this 2060 uh, Founders Edition card, um, I would say that's the better card at this point. Uh, you do get a little additional feels, features with the, um, RTX, you get the NVIDIA G-Sync with those compatible panels. Um, it's just a really good value. Downside, you don't get any uh, RGB LED if that's an important thing for you. You get a green light, that's it. Where the other cards at this price point, you're getting some, some of them have some uh, RGB effects, so you can tie into your, your theme a little bit better uh, than what maybe this would. So if that's important to you, definitely look at those sub $300, 5600 XTs. Uh, but I just personally cannot say that the uh, Strix card is a good value. Performance is fine. I mean, it really does play well for that type of a card. But save $40 and get the 2060 or one of the other uh, 5600 XTs out there. That's just, that's my opinion at this point. I think the numbers basically show that. Uh, so anyway, hopefully you enjoyed this vehicle or this vehicle. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. This is a meant to be a short one, uh, just covering the differences between the 5600 XT and the 2060 in this scenario. Uh, if you did, hit that thumbs up button for me. If you didn't, you know what else to do. Hopefully uh, you did uh, like it though. Please hit that subscribe button for me. It does help the channel to grow and we will see you in the next one.